Hi, and welcome to Serverless Migration Station, a serverless expedition mini-series dedicated to helping developers modernize their apps to using the latest features available to one of our serverless compute platforms. Today, we're continuing our coverage of migrating from App Engine task queues to Cloud Tasks. Sounds great, and I'm so happy to be here, Wes. Last time in Module 7, we added App Engine task queues, specifically push tasks, to our sample App Engine NDB Flask app. So what are we doing today? Oh, that's right, Martin. For those who haven't seen the Module 7 video or completed its code lab, please pause here to do so because we pick up from where Module 7 leaves off. Today, we're migrating from App Engine NDB to Cloud NDB and App Engine task queues to Cloud Tasks. All the links you need are down below. Now, wait, Wes, uh, did you say we're migrating from App Engine NDB and App Engine task queues to Cloud NDB and Cloud Tasks? Isn't that two migrations? That's right, Martin. While the code will undergo both migrations, we're only focused on App Engine task queues to Cloud Tasks because moving from App Engine NDB to Cloud NDB was already covered in Module 2. Modernizing your apps means moving off of the legacy App Engine services like NDB and task queues to standalone services like Cloud NDB and Cloud Tasks. So we're doing both at the same time, preparing our app to upgrade to Python 3 next in Module 9. So for all of you, the same drill as earlier with Module 7. If you haven't seen the Module 2 video or completed its code lab, we invite you to pause and do that here so you're familiar with it as we're going to concentrate only on task queues here. Wow, that's a lot of review, uh, but I think I'm caught up now. That's great, Martin. Now that you're up to speed, let's talk about what we're doing. Remember the code from Module 7 where we deleted all visits older than the oldest displayed from Data Store? Well, we're going to keep that functionality, but moving the code to Cloud Tasks. Since it's a standalone product, there's a little bit more setup to do. In addition, we're also migrating from App Engine NDB to Cloud NDB, as mentioned before. Sounds good. I'm going to do this by hand while you are explaining it. So would you please point me to the code and the code lab? Oh, for sure, Martin. If you did the Module 7 code lab, please start with your own code base. But if you didn't, clone the repo or download the zip file. We're going to start with the Module 7 code and finish with what's in the Module 8 folder. Here's the code lab as well, so pause one more time to get everything you need. Once you're ready, let's go to the computer and migrate it now. If you don't have a confirmed working Module 7 app yet, upload to App Engine with gCloud App Deploy. Most users watching this video will be on Python 2, so if that's the case, ensure your lib folder is ready to go. If not, or you're unsure, delete what you have and run pip install so that you have it. Confirm the apps the same as from Module 7, whether it's your own or ours. Once you have, then you're ready to go. Changes to the config files are nearly identical to the changes made in Module 2. We're adding use of the Google Cloud Client libraries, and these changes include adding required built-in packages that go into app.yaml instead of requirements.txt. Now, anytime built-in libraries are used, a few more lines of code have to be added to App Engine config to point your app to them, so make these changes as well. Now, let's do the non-built-in libraries like Cloud NDB. In Module 2, we added Cloud NDB to requirements.txt. This time, we're also going to add the Cloud Tasks library. Python 2 users should now delete their lib folder and run the pip install command to install Flask, Cloud NDB and Cloud Tasks to the lib folder. Again, these updates are just like in Model 2, but adding both Cloud NDB and Cloud Tasks. Now let's move to main.py. At the top, swap out the imports of App Engine's task queue and NDB libraries and replacing them with the Google Cloud equivalents. The payload sent to Cloud Tasks needs to be JSON encoded, so we're going to have to use that standard library module as well. Next, most cloud libraries require a client for each service you're using. In our case, Cloud NDB and Cloud Tasks. More specifically, Cloud Tasks requires a project ID and an app's region along with the queue name. Now, this wasn't required with App Engine task queues, but recognize that Cloud Tasks is now a separate product that can work with both App Engine and not App Engine apps, hence the extra red tape. Fortunately, its client provides a convenience function named QPath that builds a fully qualified path string for us. Be sure to swap in your app's values into the placeholder constants. Now creating a new visit and querying the most recent visits doesn't really change. 
The only difference is due to CloudDB requiring use of its Python context manager when making data store calls. So you'll see a new with block containing such calls in both store visit and fetch visits. Review the Module 2 code lab in video if you need more information here. For us in Module 7, things get really interesting from here on out, meaning that once we grab the timestamp of the oldest visit displayed, we can move on. With the App Engine Task you library, it's a single call to create a push task and respond back to the user. With Cloud Tasks, it's also a single call. However, there's a little bit more setup. After logging the oldest timestamp, you see the necessary payload that Cloud Tasks needs, a flag indicating an App Engine request, a handler URI, JSON encoded parameters, and an HTTP header. Pass this data plus the task queue path from the above to create task. That's it, and the return doesn't change. As far as the task handler goes, not much change here either. Yes, pulling out the parameter in a slightly different, any data store code is within a with block, but querying, logging, and deletion of old entities is pretty much the same. There are very few changes here because it's mostly still the same HTTP POST method we had in Module 7. Cloud Tasks is just an alternative execution platform. You really shouldn't need to change anything in the handler. Finally, there are no changes to the main application handler root. Ensure you've made all the updates we just covered to your sample app. After uploading with gcloud app deploy, it should run exactly the same as before, except now it uses Cloud Tasks. If you're using no other legacy App Engine services, it is now safe to port your app to Python 3. Congratulations. Cool. Thanks for showing us that, Wes. I'm surprised how similar Cloud Tasks is to App Engine push tasks. Is there a guide to help me get a better grasp of migrating App Engine push queues to Cloud Tasks? Oh, definitely. Um, below, you're going to find a link to the specific migration guide for moving push queues to Cloud Tasks. OK, and while you're at it, can you also point me to the docs for the original App Engine task queues, as well as Cloud Tasks? Rest assured, my friend, links to both of those are also down below. Sounds good. Usually, about this time, I ask you what other migrations we should look at. Uh, but that's not the case today, is it? No, Martin, it's not. The next app is for you to stay tuned for Module 9, where we're going to port this Module 8 app that we just finished looking at to Python 3, including an optional migration to Cloud Firestore. And we look forward to having you join us on that excursion. This is Wesley on behalf of Martin and Porter, and we'll see you at that next migration station or on another serverless expedition soon. In the meantime, happy travels. Mm -hmm.